All right. Tony in the building. All right, my man. So first off, I want to appreciate you reaching out and want to come in and sit down with me and chop it up. You you commented on one of the videos, the, the record videos, where that boy was held hostage for about 41K. Uh, you say you yourself is a heavy record operator. So where, where are you operating out of? You you operate out of the Chicagoland area? Out of, out of Atlanta, Atlanta Metro. Atlanta, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So what, what's your story, man? You say you got a story that you want to tell, so the floor is yours, doctor. I just want to give you a breakdown on there's the cost. So, like, with, when you got trucks that break down on the freeway, roll over, what have you, per se, all the, all the PDs or the state patrol have rotation for record companies. They just don't have record companies sitting by waiting. So whoever's on rotation at the time, they call that company and they have trucks waiting for those type of calls. So when they get called out nine times 10, if just that's being a rollover, they have to unload that truck before they can put it back up right. So then that's, then again, that's not the tow truck driver that's gonna do that. They gotta bring in a whole nother crew with a forklift and a dump truck, like a roll off truck, to unload that truck into, or, or and or load it into another trailer. So all that costs, and they're going to pass that on to the consumer. And then plus with the truck being rolled over, nine times out of ten, all the fuel going to leak out of it. So then, then, then now you got to bring a hazmat crew in there to dig up all that dirt, contaminated soil, and put back down fresh soil. All that gets passed on to the driver, to the company. So it's not a tow company running the bill up on you. This is all part of what goes into you rolling your truck over. You get what I'm saying? I, I feel you on that. When the PD reaches out to that particular company that's contracted with them, not only that they have to come out there with their equipment, but they also have to come out with other equipment that they sublease. And everything adds up. And, of course, you say it's passed on to the to the company, right? So with that being said, some of these record companies are so large, they have those entities in, 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 in effect in their company, within their company. So they'll have a hazmat crew. They'll have a, another whole other truck that has a tractor on it that could unload that trailer. So then those are all extra people that have to do that stuff. And then you got to bring out the heavy tow truck, which nine times out of ten is a rotator. Rotator is just a tow truck with a crane on it. And that truck costs. That's like a, almost anywhere from a three hundred thousand to a million dollar truck, depending on which one they got, and it costs to run those. So all of that, if they get, they have to get the freeway cleared within a certain amount of time, or they get a fine. So they got to be on scene within thirty minutes after the cops, the, police, the PD do their investigation. So they got to get the traffic back moving. All of this gets passed on to the truck to the company. Okay. And then, of course, once they upright their truck. They're not going to let you drive that away because nine times ten is total. So they're going to tow it back to the yard. They're going to keep it, let the insurance do what they're going to do, they charge you storage fees because you're taking up space. But I get passed on to the driver. But here's the thing, though, Tony. In that particular instance in Chicago where the young man did roll over, it wasn't the PD that called. It wasn't State Patrol that called. It was somebody that trolls those apps. And they see, like, maybe a civilian pop put in there and say, well, there's a rollover truck over here by whatever street it is. And they will come out and talk to the truck driver and be like, hey, we got some people that could come out here and do such and such and such and such. So I can understand where you're coming from, like, if, it's, if it was a PD that came out there and did all of that. But this wasn't sent by a PD. This was a whole person that came out there and offered the service, and then they called the other service to come out there to do what they needed to do to get the, the truck upright. I, I, in a way, I feel there's a lot missing from this conversation, for what you was told from the original story, because we don't have scanners in our trucks. It's, it's pretty much well, I know mine particularly, but I don't know the for Chicago, but like a, a heavy-duty record operator not just going to be sitting somewhere and like looking for wrecks. One, two, it costs to run that truck because the truck will burn a whole lot more fuel. It take, you have to change the brakes on the truck every six months because they're bigger brakes. 
than a regular semi. And if anybody else probably saw the, you know, if somebody rolled by and saw it and then called it in, yes, they probably could have happened. But we don't just sit in trucks just be sitting in them unless you're on shift. And nine times ten when you're on shift, you're either sitting out on the freeway somewhere or you sit in the yard. Okay, I feel you. I I used to work for a record company out in Cleveland, and and yeah, we we usually sit in the sit off the off to the side of the road until we get a call from AAA or something like that. But these guys, these is like scouters. They're they're not the actual tow truck guys. And I I get what you're saying. I I wouldn't be out there sitting with a scanner either. But there are guys like that actually that's called spotters that sits out there and they have their own so they police scanners the the app scanners and stuff like that and when they hear a call that comes through the scanner then they'll rush out to the scene and then they'll get with that tow truck driver as i said before they'll give it that tow truck driver and be like hey we we got a company they they probably might have played as they was the company, but as it said in in the article, they subleased out to the other company that actually came and did the work. So that spotter, whoever he worked, whoever he worked for or contract with, he would get a percentage of what was was the cost and everything. So I get it. But see, like I said, with with a rollover, I can't see how PD wasn't on the scene and would ask for all that stuff and seeing who they would have called. But, like, to upright a truck, you're going to leave more than a 50-ton wrecker. And depending on what's in it, a truck and trailer, that's, that's, that's pretty feet. And they got to know what they're doing. No way you're going you're gonna to roll a truck and trailer over in the free in traffic and PD not be called. I don't know how things work in Chicago, but I know where I'm at, it ain't happening without PD being there. And they will not let you do anything until they clear the scene. Yes. And and being from where you at, this will have to be a PD call, right? Yeah, fact, uh, absolutely. GSP or whatever, whoever arrives on the scene at the time, the Georgia State Patrol or Department of Transportation have to call that in. And nine times ten, they'll call whoever's in rotation at the time. And that's who'll come out. One record get there. One record get there, and then notice that he might need another record to upright this truck, and he'll call another record. But he'll start setting himself up. Then the other record gets there, and then they upright it, you know? Now, again, from where you at, you, you're you in a totally different state, but you we here in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, but it's all, Things... it's, every, it's, a trip, it's called a trip program. It, it is no cap on it anywhere. So we have the same situation down here in Georgia, where a box truck broke down in the middle of the road, and they got charged $14,000 for getting pulled out of the road, and it's called a trip program. And... Like I said, it, it's there's no cap on it. They can cap some things, but they know there's no cap on trip on whatsoever. In Chicago, scam companies are abundant out there. Not just not just oh, with the course. trucking companies. I was leased on when I had my truck on the road. I, I was leased on with a, a Russian company, and you know, we ran where we ran. You know, and she, it, a lot of lot of did a lot of dirty stuff. Right? They and yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot of dirt. It's definitely a lot of yeah. dirt going on in Chicago, and they're getting the they get in situations and that's why I said those guys with those scan with those scanners be there on scene. Like, to get that money from right, you. right. Because they know it's gonna happen. Just like right now this time of year, going across seventy over over you know, going westbound. How many records you see sitting out there, heavy records just sitting there waiting. And they know something's gonna happen. Getting themselves prepared. Right. So they are to be there. That keep the flow of traffic going. But and then that comes with a cost. Okay, that's what's up. They go they're they gonna they're gonna they're gonna drag you and that's how it's no offense to bust about it but it has to be done i mean you can't you're not gonna get it for cheap so you think in that article is more to that to that 41k story though it has to be but unless he was pulling was it just tractor only was he pulling a container was he pulling a drive in was he pulling a reefer right now a drive van trailer and you know how the trailer inside the drive van walls are if freight leaning against that wall they're gonna bust the wall out so they got to unload that trailer before they upright it same with the reefer now, you may be able to upright a container without unloading it, but you're not uprighting no driving on a reefer. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if he was I'm, carrying anything because they, inside the video, they were showing that the one of the wreckers uprighting the truck anyway. So I'm I'm not sure if he was carrying any carrying anything, but I agree with you. If it was something in there, 
especially hazmat material. Yeah, PD should have been on the scene. Oh yeah, but they got to they got to block it off. And they got to, and they got a, a time limit to clean all that stuff up. You just can't let it sit. Cause as long as you let it sit on the, the ground, on dirt, it's gonna soak down more. That's more dirt you got to dig up, and more dirt you got to replace. And you got to dispose of that dirt. Just can't throw it anywhere. You know what I mean? Exactly. All right, so you... Uh, and one of those tow trucks, you know, the kind that garages use. So you tow out of Georgia. And before that, you said you, you mentioned in our conversation that you was a driver. Why why you uh, transitioned from being, uh, being a semi-driver to a tow truck driver? I still own my truck. It's just been parked for a year. Um, I still crank it up and running around a couple of times, around the block a couple of times, but it's, the rates are not good enough for me to be out on the road. That's just the, that's the bottom line of it. It's not paying enough for me to be away from home at this moment. So you decided to get into the tow truck game. I, I, I talked it up a year beforehand, and I, you know, you, you, I spoke it into existence. And an opportunity came, and I took it. What's some of the stories out there on the road that you came across, bro? What, what was some of the harshest tolls that, that you came across in Georgia? I've seen so far, like the dude literally cried in my back seat of my truck. I thought we told him, You stop to get fuel somewhere where you weren't supposed to. And it was on the incline, and he was mad overweight. And his foot slipped off the clutch, and he grenaded his transmission. And he thought it was going to be a day or so fix. And I told him, I, You know, being real with him, I said, Man, look into a flight or catch the bus home because you're going to be down for a while. I literally had to strap the transmission up under the truck to the frame so it won't drag on the ground when I told the truck. And at the rates they're paying labor right now, you're not getting no labor anywhere in a major shop at no less than two fifty an hour. So Damn, you say two fifty an hour. Yes. Yes. Now, like at Rush Truck Center, not throw name drop name drop, sorry. They it's two fifty an hour two fifty an hour and if it's over twenty five hundred bucks in bill, you have to pay part of your bill before they start working on the truck. Woo. Real talk. And other competitors, other major companies, you know, brands. Or at two fifty one, it's 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 two fifty two fifty five an hour. That's just labor alone, and everything is computer generated as far as labor nowadays. Was you called out to any to any other Georgia accidents, in particularly like two eighty five or something like that? Okay, because the two major companies in Georgia got all that sewed up right now, and you know that's uh, Marriott or Towing and um, another company I can't remember the name of it offhand right now. They pretty much got all that sewed up, so they're gonna run you. Okay. I roll those all the time. You know, in Atlanta, people come around here, run around this 285 and roll the truck over in a heartbeat on a get on ramp or get off ramp. Told a couple of trucks. I don't tow the truck off the freeway once, but we didn't run them real bad. And if I see somebody broke down on the way back into the yard and in the middle of the road, I will off them. I will pull them out the road and I'm get them on the shoulder. I can't take that call because it wasn't dispatched to it. But I can get them out the road at no cost. And they'll, you know, throw a little change in my pocket. But I don't, I don't charge them anything. I just do it out of good faith. So you just do semis or do you do it all? I, I only do semi trucks. That's it. I don't do, no, I don't do the light duty stuff. I, don't do the, I just do heavy duty stuff. All right. Other than that, other than that transmission, uh, any, any, anything else that, uh, that props? That I had happened? one yesterday. Yesterday, one, somebody went down the road trying to get to a delivery. And made the, they used their Google Maps and drove over a wooden bridge and drove off the wooden bridge and had to pick it up, and put it back on the road. That was crazy, but we got it done. No, no, not too much damage to the truck or the bridge. And another one we had uh, a guy tried to turn around behind a shopping center with an 18 wheeler that he was making delivery to and got pent between the building, the gas line, and the tree. So we had to separate the two pieces and pick the tractor up off of the gas line and move it and pick the trailer up and move it out of the way and tow both of them out of there. Was there any situation that you came up on the scene after being dispatched? You get with the driver, you let them know how much it's going to cost them, and he turns around and give you some attitude about it and be like, yo, man, I, I don't want this. No, I don't make those calls. That come, they get that call when they first call it in. They get that cost when they first call in. All I do is collect when we get to the final destination. And if they don't pay when they get to the final destination, then we take the truck back to our yard. Has there been any cases that uh, that the drivers haven't paid? Yes, and I take it right back to my yard and drop them in there, and they have to then they have to pay the tow bill from the final destination. The added bill for me taking it from where I took it to back to my yard, and then plus storage fees and admin fees. But these are drivers that's well aware of how much it was going to cost them in the first place, right? Beforehand. Beforehand. So when you call for a tow, they're going to tell you, as you know, what it's going to cost from port to port. Port to port meaning from where the truck 
from their yard to you, from where they got to take you to, back to their yard. You're going to pay, they're going to charge you the miles on that. And then any additional labor costs, like as far as separating the truck or putting a dry shaft or something like that. But most companies just don't charge disconnection fee. But you have to pay that bill before they disconnect from your truck. If they drop that truck and don't get paid, then they just, they stuck. Have you came in any any situation where you did have to take the truck back and the driver was in the, was in the cab with you and given some type of pushback? Oh, yeah. Some, um, it came to blows once. And they say he didn't make it out too well. But then I still took his truck after he got arrested. You said the driver didn't make it out and you still took the truck. So some of these drivers, when they when they make the call and they accept the bill and everything, they, they call themselves try to try to try to slide you? Yeah, they'll try to they'll try to get it down some, you know, for the most part, but then at the same time they already know what the bill is beforehand. But we got to the point in my company in particular Got to the point where we won't have the money up front before we even accept the tow. Is it During combat, two of these would jump over a river towing cables. As people have, we, we won't take certain cars either. Because people will call and say, um, the car was stolen or we didn't authorize, authorize this transaction. So, But y'all y'all do take all the T-checks, time data checks and stuff like that, though, yes. right? Yes, yes, yes. And once you give me a little money code or to have an express code, that's good. That's like cashier's check every time. Since you're seeing both sides of the spectrum, man, saying I'm in the wrong business, bro. Am I in the wrong business right now, bro? Should I get in the tow truck business? What's what's up, man? I, I would say so because it's the market. Um, you just got to find your niche where it ain't too, you know. But it's, it's, it's I don't see myself getting back on the road. I put my truck up for sale. I, don't, I mean, it's money to be made. Everybody breaking down all the time, especially these new trucks that have been sitting. These newer trucks are worse than the older trucks. Literally, I can tell you right now, if you got a Volvo, a new model Volvo, they're completely darn electrical-wise to where they're dead and not doing anything. The Cascadians, where they use a short motor in them, they're blowing up. Soccer ball size hole on the side of the motor. Anything with the Cummins in it, it's throwing the fan clutch and the fan through the radiator. New trucks, I mean, less than 500 miles on them. I got pictures I can send you. It's just amazing. And they're and they like, I just drove this truck off the dealership. I only got 600 miles on it. It did this. Mm, sorry for you. Where do you want me to take you? So I can get to my next tow. What's your average tows, man? You get to the scene. You hook up. You get it You get it going. What, what, what would be the breakdown of the time for you on that? It all depends on where and where it's at. Um, getting to it anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. Um, it'll take me about 30 to 45 minutes to hook a truck up and go be, to be rolling with it. And then once I get to the dealership, most dealerships don't want me to put it back together without taking a part to tow it. So they can charge the customer for putting it back together. Um, that's another racket too. So like when you take, we take trucks to the dealership, they don't want us to put them back together. The dealership say, don't touch it. Just put it in a spot, set more numbers in and leave it as it is. We're going to charge them for putting the dry shot back in, put the axle back in. Whatever I took apart, they're going to put a brand new part back on there and charge them for that. That's added on to whatever else is wrong with the truck. And at it most, it'll take me about an hour to depending on how far the tow got to go. Be over and done with it. Hour, hour to two hours. What's the average? Now, let me ask you this. What, what's the average cost of an average tow? Average tow for the Joe Blow, uh, no less than $1,000. $800 to $1,000. That's, that's the minimum, the lowest I don't see. I don't see it get upwards of $5,000. It's because of what I had to do. And where it had to go, I don't see some drivers so lazy to the point where they run out of time and call for a tow truck. This is taking for me to come get them and take them to where they got to deliver to. Now, I'm serious about that. I'm like, for real, you just ran out of time. You want me to tell you where? And had to put them in the dock and everything. A penguin? They're good at walking in snow, but I'm not sure they have the towing capacity. Hey, I'm I'm not gonna hold you. I I had to do that. I ran out of I ran out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I ran out of time. I called up dispatch, and I I was over there trying to tell dispatch like, "Yo, truck stop is right down the street." And this is like doing my earlier. Well, this is years ago that happened. I was at Walmart. I'll never forget it. But I was just trying to tell the dispatcher. I'm over here like, yo, I'm I'm right down the street from from the pilot. I ain't want to go into 
I ain't want to go into violation or nothing like that, but they was like, no, nah, I'll pull over to the side and we'll get a tow truck out there. The dude, the dude couldn't believe it either. He came, not he was like, something matter with the truck. I was like, no. Nah. He was like, what you need a tow truck for? I said, we we I, I needed towed to the to the pilot. I ran out of hours. Bro was like, you can't, you can't be serious. I was like, that's what they told me. They so I, I guess that was, what, just from down the street to the pilot, I, I don't know how much they paid, but I can imagine it was it was around what you said, about about at least a grand, maybe 1500 bro. For the most part, that's probably what it was. But you would be, and, and that's crazy, that, it, but it happens all the time. I get it all the time. It, it's, and it's, and it's, but I don't mind it. It's money in my pocket. But the crazy part about it, yo, you still have to log out. You got to go off duty, log out the system. Because soon as you know with the new system now, as soon as I, I move that truck, it's gonna kick it in the drive. So then in turn, now you got to when you get back in the truck, wherever I drop you at, you got to go back in there and log back in and, and say that wasn't you. You was being told. So, so then you got to go through all the e-log processes, getting that cut off, so you won't have to set that time. I had to I had to log and go off duty, like all the I had to log all the way out of the system, so it won't so it won't affect me. But when it did came back on. It did ask me, like, yo, did you drive? Like, no. no. <laughs> he drive. I tell guys all the time. I tell guys all the time when I uh, pick them up and they've been sitting on the road, broke down or whatever, on the shoulder or whatever. And I say, all right, um, go off duty and go back. Since you've been on duty this whole time, go back and put that all off duty and tell them that you, and put in the comments, broke down. So that you won't kill your 11, but your 14 still going. That's because I get you somewhere and they can fix it right quick and the quick fix you can get rolling again. That's saving your clock. And then I tell them to go off duty and log out. So when I told you, he's going to kick it back in the drive. So I already know. So I, I drove two myself. So I know the game. So do you get a percentage of of yes, the tolls? I, I work on a percentage. Oh, so, you, on so, percentage. so you get a percentage of all of all tolls that you do? Yes. Some some companies pay hourly. Some companies pay percentage. And I get a percentage. Is it better Is it better to do percentage or is it better to go hourly? Or is it just how, how people better want it? I mean, what, would you want to get paid hourly for a six thousand dollar tow? Would take you an hour or two, or you want to get paid a percentage of that tow? No, six grand. Okay, I'll see what's up. You know what I'm saying? This is like booking freight. You're gonna try to get the best freight you can, so you can get a bigger percentage of yourself for yourself, right? Right. So I'd rather be percentage than anything. So at the end of the week, all my tolls add up. I like a percentage of all that. Okay, okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. My last question, man, before we get on up out of here, and I do appreciate the time that you that you came and sat down with me, man. But what about wrench outs? Like, I, I know that costs a grip, too, but what was some of the most expensive wrench out that you had to do? Wrench outs, wrench outs are, it's an hourly rate. So what I normally, what my company normally charges, from the time the call comes in until the time I get back to the yard. Don't charge the mileage on that because the wrench outs are normally running from, um, 200 bucks an hour, depending on how bad the situation is. And sometimes a wind shot could turn into a recovery. And the difference in that is how many times you got to unhook every time, how many times you got to unhook. So if I went you out and I don't have to unhook one time and pull you out from being stuck, but then if I have to unhook again and keep rehooking and repositioning my truck to get you out, then it turns into a recovery. Now, with that being said, if somebody came out with a rotator, off top, that's 250 bucks an hour to 300 bucks, 350 bucks an hour. That's a bigger truck. Costs way more. I'm just in a 25 ton record. So I'm only one of the smaller records, heavy duty records. And I can't operate those bigger ones, but it costs it costs more when you get one of those to come out. What was some of the what was some of the trucks that you had to wrench out from? Like what what was some of the situations that you was in that you had to do a wrench out? People going where they were supposed to go. Like a lot of people that did flatbed and piggybacking. They, they, um, people going where they supposed to go. Like I always tell people when they go off road to Get out and walk the situation. Walk the area. If you sink, then your truck definitely will sink. As if you're walking on the, on the wet ground. So, and it'd be simple mistakes. I got plenty of pictures. I take pictures of a lot of stuff. But I can't really post things because I got in trouble once for posting uh, a truck that I almost rolled over. And I forgot to cover the comfort company name and they called and explained. But, like, I can see all this stuff. And you can see for yourself. Some of the simplest, crazy things, like places you ain't supposed to be. It's ridiculous what some of these drivers get into. I don't, I don't get it. And I've been driving for 24 years. I've been stuck before, but not like this. Do you do you but attest that? Do you attest that to just being new drivers or just drivers that, that just don't want to pay attention to what they're supposed to be doing? I say both, because like yourself, you've probably been out here just probably just as long as I have. 
we were taught different, but we still learn every day in the, in the truck industry. But a lot of us, it's common sense. Like if you run in your GPS and then you gotta make a left turn and you see the sign say 12, six, do you still make that left turn? Or you keep going straight to see if you can find another way to get over there. These new guys are making that left turn and getting stuck. Nah, I'm going to. They're not, they're not I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn around and see if I can find another way. Right, but a lot of these new guys are not doing that. So they got to a point that I believe when they started training these kids, where a lot of these trainers are in it just for the money, not really teaching people how to drive. You gonna get in a truck, you gonna go straight. When we get to the dock, I'm gonna do all the docking. All I want you to do is drive straight. You don't got to worry about backing nothing up. And then they. Send them on their way and put them in the truck by themselves, and they don't know half the job. Sometimes, yeah. when you get in a situation like that, like a thirteen sit situation too, they the the first thing they'll do they'll call their their fleet managers, and nine times out of ten, those fleet managers are not drivers, so they they be the ones that tell these new guys like, okay, well, what's your what's your truck height? Oh, it's thirteen sits. Oh, okay, well, go ahead and go, and then. Lo and behold, it's not 13 sits. It probably might be 13 four, and then they get stuck. And of course, they had to call their fleet manager back, and and then their fleet manager turns around and be like, "Oh, okay. Well, you're supposed to be the professional truck driver." looking at it on from Google Maps, not using the truck with GPS. And say, oh, that's fine. You can make it down that street. That's right there. Just get past the obstacle and you can be at your delivery. And now you hung up on some railroad tracks or stuck up on their bridge because your fleet manager or your dispatcher told you to do so. Well, they, they're they not going to get that ticket you are. And they're going to hit you with a, a preventable accident. Well, because your fleet manager told you to, oh, 13, sis, you good. Go ahead. And That part. Yep. How to get into a heavy wrecking touring, man? Do you... Do you have to have your CDL? And if so, which one? Do you have to have your A or a B? You're going to need your A because it's still a combination. You're going to need Class A. And nine times out of ten, a lot of these heavy companies are not going to really train you. Some will. So find a company that's willing to train you and be a sponge and learn as much as you can. And like it, with touring, every day I learn something new. It's like trucking. There's, there's no challenge. Is there like a school for touring heavy equipment? Is there like a, a school for that or... Oh, I got yeah. on a job training. I got on a job training. I don't know if there's a school for it, but I got on a, on a job training. And plus, I was kind of experienced already from doing heavy haul, you know, and, and flatbed and stuff like that, from strapping and changing the securing load. So it's pretty. It was, I caught on pretty fast. But the only difference is you got two two pivot points now. So you got a pivot point between the truck and the truck between the wreck and the truck. And then you got a pivot point in the truck and trailer. So imagine backing that up into a spot. No, I'm good. I, I don't think I want to imagine. That. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay imagining that one, bro. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.